There's something beautiful about technology, which is that it's always evolving. Nothing stands still. And right now on the internet, there's a new product category coming out, which is smart routing. So in this post, we talk about smart routing and what it is, as well as a um, test drive. We show, we show you a test drive of a new product called Cloudflare Argo. And uh, we tested it for 10 days on a high scale website that we run. We collected some metrics and we are going to share that with you. So first of all, the uh, topic of smart routing is somewhat new on uh, the product list of site owners. Uh, if you've used Cloudflare, uh, you know this is a fantastic product that caches content close to the user. So here there's a picture from cloudflare.com showing an example of a user being in Australia with a Cloudflare data center in Australia. On the other hand, the server would be, in that case, in Europe. And the content travels from Europe to the user through different routes. The beauty of Cloudflare and the CDN, that is the base product, is that it takes the static assets of a website and it makes a copy of these assets close to the user. So the static assets at the baseline are in Australia in the uh, data center for Cloudflare, and they can be reached very quickly by the user uh, without having to travel back to the origin. Now, there is part of the content that still needs to travel, even with Cloudflare's pro plan, part of the, 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 the content is dynamic for most websites. And the content has to travel that is not dynamic, it has to travel through different routes. So smart routing introduces the concept of route optimization. Cloudflare in their blog post talks about Waze. If you've used the Waze mobile app on your phone, if you're in city traffic, it's a fantastic app that knows where all the traffic jams, all the accidents are, and it routes you through detours sometimes that are much faster, that take much less time because you avoid the congestion. The same goes for Cloudflare Argo. Uh, Cloudflare knows because of its data centers and the data collection that it does across its network, Cloudflare knows where the congestions are. And as a result, it can route traffic through its data centers and through routes that make the round trip from the origin to the user faster. The advertised benchmarks and the numbers by the, um, the Argo product team include a 35% reduction in latency and connection errors decreasing by 27%. So we tried testing this for ourselves. Before we did this, we looked first, can we afford Argo? That's a big piece. Uh, Argo is non-trivial, especially if you have a site with a lot of images. In our case, it's a food blog. So think about food blogs, travel blogs, uh, things that are not enterprise, that require a lot of views to uh, monetize and to break even, but as a result, serve a lot of bandwidth. If you look at it that way, and you look at the cost of Argo, the cost of Argo is $5 per month as a fixed fee, just to enable the feature, and then 10 cents per gigabyte served of bandwidth. So 10 cents is actually non-trivial because uh, you look at our bandwidth consumption. We took that example over a month. We consumed 1.3 terabytes of which 1.07 was cached and then 229 gigs was uncached. But we get billed with Argo for the total amounts, the 1.3. So in that case, on a monthly basis, that would take a site uh, like uh, one of ours from a $20 plan on a pro plan, for example, to 155. That's almost a 7x increase from the pro plan. Now the question is, is it worth it? So the setup, the setup is really a breeze. Uh, I'm going to exit this uh, screen right now, if it lets me. 
and I'm going to show you the Cloudflare interface. All you need to do as a site owner is simply turn this on. There's no change to the origin to make. Uh, there's nothing to um, tweak like some other uh, features of uh, Cloudflare, like cache everything, which requires you to really think about do you want to cache everything or some of the things in the business plans like Railgun, which requires you to install a memcache instance on the origin and then configure uh, the um, origin with Cloudflare with a little bit more involvement and potential for errors and it's harder to remove. So uh, Argo is so simple. It's so simple because you've got nothing to do as a site owner other than turning it on and turning it off. And that makes it very easy to experiment uh, if uh, you wanted to do that. So the setup is really simple. Now let's go into what happened. So we ran Argo for 10 days from May 21, from the evening of May 21 through May 31st. Response time was the uh, first metric that we looked at and we are showing you right now the metrics from the 1st of January all the way through May 30th to give you some, some, some background and some context on how server response time can evolve for a big site. And uh, one thing that happened in January is we were running on a uh, shared host, a good shared host, but a shared host nonetheless. We went to a dedicated server. And of course, that took our latency down significantly. Uh, you can see the uh, numbers for mid-January, February, uh, huge improvements just by upgrading our origin server. In uh, at the end of February, towards March, we added SSL and HTTP2 as a result. The consequence of SSL and HTTP2 in terms of server response time was an increase in server response time. So it went back up despite we were hoping that HTTP2 uh, would bring benefits uh, and it brought benefits maybe in total performance, but in response time, it added to it, probably through uh, the, the SSL protocol. Now, you look at the stats there from the time we turned on Argo and uh, we had a significant improvements. Uh, Cloudflare ad advertises 35% for their marquee customer. We had 33% improvements from March and April average of two months. We looked at Google Analytics and we uh, looked at these two months combined for 20 milliseconds. And then the week of March 21 to 27, with Argo on, uh, it went down to 280. So 33% gain. Uh, clearly, Argo has made a difference. Now let's look at something else, which is DOM loading time, document content loaded time. Uh, Google Analytics makes this available as well as the total load time. Uh, we do not measure a total load time because we run ads and most of what makes the total time for loading are the ads. So it's not really actionable performance for us other than turning on the ads or turning off the ads. But if you really look at what runs on the domain, uh, DOM loading is a much better proxy. Now, part of DOM loading includes things, I believe, like uh, Jetpack related posts. So we run WordPress and then uh, the related posts are inserted dynamically by a plugin called Jetpack. And that still counts as part of DOM loading. And that adds to it uh, sometimes. So it, the reason why I'm saying this is because we did not see a change between the uh, week prior without Argo and the week uh, with Argo turned on. It was the same performance. We could not see a, a difference. So. Uh, it's possible that uh, some content just uh, becomes the bottleneck and no matter what Argo does, uh, it doesn't really improve. So then we thought about these um, dropped connections or these error rates that uh, Argo is advertising. And because we don't run New Relic, uh, we do not have advanced uh, metrics other than Google Analytics, uh, WordPress stats, and of course Cloudflare stats. 
we could not really uh, find a better proxy than bounce rate. So bounce rate also varies by sources. The bounce rate of social is not the bounce rate of organic search. So we're showing you here the bounce rates over five months for the organic traffic. And you can see that it's quite stable. It's been slowly going down. And uh, we had actually one of the better uh, weeks, uh, the week that we turned Argo on. So to be uh, precise, let's see if this is going to show. Yes, uh, we had, sorry, this is bouncing. So we, we, we took three, uh, three numbers. The first week, which was May 14 to 20th with that Argo, 79.5. Uh, the bounce rate went down to 78.15, which is actually almost a one and a half percent reduction the week after. And if that's due to Argo, that's quite significant. But then we kept Argo on May 20th through 30, three days, and the bounce rate went back up. So we, don't, we didn't touch anything between week two and week, the beginning of week three, and it went back up somewhat. So it, it's hard to say because it fluctuates. It's hard to say that Argo made an improvement, but if it did, you know, 1% bounce rate, 2% bounce rate means that it's a significant amount of pages um, in increments, and that potentially can make a business case for Argo, but it has to be proved, and Cloudflare is still working on the analytics. So hopefully in the future, we can get better, a better sense of what Argo enables in terms of dropped connections, incremental pages, incremental traffic. Uh, we really can't see that uh, right now. So that's uh, the, the result of the test drive. And when we look at the cost and the experience, because the main benefit right now is on the server response time. And the pricing for Argo charges by bandwidth. Uh, perhaps there's an opportunity for Cloudflare to make Argo more affordable to, to more customers. Um, and that's just a thought there. We, we don't know exactly how Argo is architected. But if we look at our bandwidth, we have a total of 1.3 terabytes per month, of which 107 terabytes is cached. That cached content is already near the user. If it's already near the user, it may not need to go through an optimal route because it's near the user. So if Cloudflare charged the same amount of money, the 10 cents, uh, just for what comes out of the origin, you can see on the math uh, down from the, the charts that the price would go down significantly. Now you go from a $20 plan on the pro plan to 20 plus 23 plus five. So 28, that becomes $48, $50 a month for a reduction in uh, response time and an acceleration of, of, of dynamic content. That becomes interesting. That becomes interesting, and I don't know if the math would work or if that platform is going to do it or not, but uh, it's a thought that uh, today a lot of the content is already cached and perhaps you know, Cloudflare could make that available to a larger user base doing this. So that was our test. Uh, we'd love to hear what you guys uh, are experiencing. And then, of course, uh, on firstpractica.com, we uh, invite you to look at the other posts. Uh, we talk about server response time in general and how, as a site owner, you can accelerate server response time uh, through uh, you know, the origin, what you do on the origin, and then things like AMP pages, many, many things. So hope that's useful. Let us know uh, what uh, you think and what you'd like to hear about, and we'll talk to you soon.